Good day and welcome to a new video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Hey all and welcome to a new stream. Um, today we're joined by Edgevery. Is that how you say it? Uh, everyone pronounces it differently. <laughs> Edgevery. Nice. It's um. Yeah, it's it's not exactly a common name, but it's it's yeah. It's it's just a nickname. Awesome. Awesome, but here's her art. You can check it out at deviantart.com forward slash Edgemene Finney. Very <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's up on screen, and you get the link down below if you guys um, need to get to it to check her work out. Uh, anyway, uh, so at the moment, I've got a. Um, page of my book playing so I've um, got this book I'm working on at the moment I'm up to page 9 um, at the moment I think it's going to be about 14 page book ish of, uh, I'm pretty sure it was 14 pages I'm aiming for um, and it, it's about this you know this hedgehog uh, who comes in contact with this cat who gets in his way of wanting this fruit because Henry, Henry's favourite fruit is the kiwi fruit and he wakes up one day smelling the kiwi fruit smell and just wanting to go for it but unfortunately there's that cat in his way so he comes up with different ideas and things to try and get to the kiwi fruit um, because he's really you know scared of this ferocious cat um, yeah, and so far we've gotten, um, he, so far I've illustrated, um, him coming out of his burrow, um, him first meeting this ferocious cat, uh, running away, uh, coming back and then trying to disguise himself in leaves, um, and then coming back again, uh, trying to, you know, distract him with the stick that he picks up to, um, you know, so it's, it's interesting you guys that are watching get to see, you know, this thing evolve a bit more, you know, the bit of the story, um, bit of the background and things like that, um, yeah, anyway, that's, uh, me and what I'm doing at the moment, uh, hey, can you tell me about yourself, Ange? Um... What, uh, what should I start with? Uh, just like, um, you know, where you're from and, um, do you have Yeah, you? sure. Um, gen generic information. Mm. Um, I'm uh, from Lithuania, um, but I'm spending a lot of time in uh, Norway now. And I've been drawing and painting since very early age. I, uh, I finished an art school, actually, but, um, well, actually, I got into digital art because I was a very avid playing player of uh, World of Warcraft and uh, my friends were like, oh, <laughs> hey, can you draw our character? So it just started with that and I drew with a pencil. I didn't really uh, even know about uh, like digital tablets back then. Hmm. And uh, one of my friends convinced me to to just buy one. He said like, <laughs> oh yeah, you know, like people love this kind of stuff. You should totally try it. So I uh, saved up some money and uh, got myself a tablet. And I was really surprised because um, originally I never really was much into painting. Hmm. It's in like uh, gouache and uh, like all the traditional means. I, I, I kind of like watercolors, but uh, yeah, not so much uh, gouache. So hmm. having... Uh, digital means and access to all of her colors without dirtying my hands. I mm. really like. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a lot of fun and um, yeah, it's quite messy with traditional mediums, which is fun. Um, but it can be really fun because it's messy. Mm. But I don't know. I just I I never really liked the you know like the the thicker paints. Mm. But uh, in kind of faking them on the screen that I really mm. yeah that's quite cool you know like um, yeah you just have a for the, with a click of a button you just have a different color um, 
things like that so yeah and all the effects too i mean mm. like there's so much you cannot you simply cannot do in traditional media that you can in digital mm. exactly like you know you can't um just uh you can't just undo what you just did you know um <laughs> you always have to find yeah, ways to look at things yes mm. You have to, in traditional, you have to either work in your mistakes or find ways to hide them. Um, but, you know, um, yeah, you know, there's positives and negatives about mediums. Hmm. Yeah, it's it, it gives, a, I think the main difference is that it gives a different look at the mm. end result. But uh, it, having started with traditional has been a huge boost to my like later development in art. Uh, because uh, the the same thing as you just mentioned, uh, not mu not having much room for mistakes also kind of teaches you how to think ahead mm. and how to prioritize catching over just painting something out to uh, to, to the end. So th there are benefits, but at the same time, in digital you have the freedom of just making mistakes over and over and just like going back. So it's I think it's it's fun to have tried everything. Mm. Definitely. I mean, it's the same for me. I've started out traditionally. Like, I didn't think probably four, four or five years ago that I'd even consider doing digital. You know, it was all like, oh, colour mm. pencil. I love colour pencil. That's my thing. Um, you know, I want to get really, really good at colour pencil. Um, but eventually I just was like, oh, I, I tried a, you know, one of those draw on Wacom screens and I was just like oh my gosh now I've you know eventually I kept on you know going back to it and it was like oh my gosh this is you know different than I was expecting and in the end I was like you know I actually went more digital than I did traditional um yeah it's an interesting turn <laughs> yeah it's just great but, yeah, in saying that all the traditional work did help a lot because, you know, I was, um, you know, making all those mistakes. I was always conscious about getting a good drawing down and then um, also getting, you know, starting off the right way with colour pencil. You know, I don't want to start off with too many dark tones at the start. Um, I just want to lightly place some of my undertone colors slowly and then start to build it up on top and on top of that um yeah and that's definitely fed into you know the way that i do digital as well um yeah um yeah it's like certain work patterns we just translate from one medium to another hmm exactly and you know that's that can be a good thing and a bad thing because, uh, you know, some of the um, traditional ways of doing things is different from digital. Um, you know, there's certain things you can do, you know, creating fur and creating things. You don't really have to um, do all the strokes and um, find a way to do them without, you know, putting uh, so much time into it you know there's ways to do things without um spending so much time on it with digital mediums you know you can um use brushes uh the way that i'm i'm still learning fur all the time you know i'm chopping and changing how i paint fur try new things mm. with it um yeah yeah fur can be complicated <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you use um Discord a wee bit and you do a Discord server do you? Uh yeah, I, I made a small Discord server, but uh, that is mostly just for like uh, <laughs> posting my art and uh mm -hmm. keeping keeping track of people who want to come uh, since it's much uh, simpler for me to just uh ping everyone instead of uh, having to post on social media and uh Awesome. Well, do you do you actually quite um? Do you, so you use Discord quite a bit? 
mostly for personal use, mm. uh, not so much art related. Though it's it's mm. it's also good to uh, try and keep in contact with other artists and uh, share opinions and ask for feedbacks because feedback is always extremely valuable. So that's nice to like. I'm trying to slowly uh, increase the amount of artists I know and uh, just like share share wisdom basically. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I use Discord as well, and, um, you know, I've been a part of a couple of art channels on there, and um, some more other ones as well, which is quite cool. It's quite cool that, um, you know, you can go into groups and find other artists and people. It's a, you know, it's they say it's like the new Skype per se, but um, it's it's more, I reckon, you know, it's it, it feels like more like a social media but um it's not exactly considered a social media but um I w for me I would say it is you know there's ways to you know share your art on it to find other artists to talk to um which is quite cool you know it's like this whole another community and you can build a community there um you know for me I've got a I've got a discord server um which I just add, you know, all the artists that I talk to to there. If they, if they did, you know, if I've talked to them on Discord, I just add them on there, and you know, that way can, they can share their art on there if they like. And um, I usually just often share these videos on there to let everyone know, you know, what's been happening on my channel and things. Um, yeah, but it it's quite cool to use. Um, there's you know places on there where you can also get critiques, which is quite cool. Um, and the yeah. most important. Mm. Yeah, it, it's really good to get critiques and things. Um, these days, for me, I don't really go out and seek many critiques. Um, oh, I, why not? Oh well, it's just. Um, it's just probably time, I suppose, you know, I just want to move on and, um, I come back to things, you know, um, but, I mean, because I'll be going backwards, you know, I'll be going through some of my, um, older pieces, especially from this book, like, from page one to page nine, I'll be going back, so, you know, probably I might actually, um, place it to some of my uh, artist groups I am a part of, you know, and get critiques for those pages. Um, yeah, it's, uh, most of the time it just comes down to time, you know, I'm just kind of, I don't want to spend all my time, like, getting critiques and things, so I know it's good, but, yeah. <laughs> How about you, do you often seek out critiques, or... Um, I, I do try to get that as often as I can, mm. um, because, uh, I mean, especially when working on a piece for a long time, um, like spending many hours in, in one go, eventually you start getting blind to the mistakes that you are making, the proportions, they start looking fine or, or, or the shading or whatever else, and it, you just either need to put that artwork away for like a few days and then take a look with a fresh eye or inquire friends to kind of go like yeah does does everything look fine to you and suddenly someone goes like yeah that arm is way too long it's like oh damn yeah you're right i have to fix that mm -hmm. so it's i i feel like uh seeking critiques is well at least for for me is very important so mm. i i try to uh, get others others opinions on on it as much as possible uh, not necessarily only on just rendering and uh, the you know the general stuff but also on design solutions like does what does this character make you think of or like uh, who do you think they are and like these kind of things because well especially in concept art i uh, have to create opportunities for the viewer to have like it, it, make them question like why is it like that or hmm. have them think of a story just by looking at at the artwork so yeah it's it's pretty important uh, to to like seek out whatever's thing because from one 
one person's perspective it's it can get very <laughs> blurry and it's, it's a, sometimes hard to judge yourself yeah exactly it is you know and it can be harsh for some people you know then it um you know especially if you've worked so hard on it and then you know someone just comes to you and like that's off or that's bad <laughs> you know or, or this is this arm just looks wonky you know you just you can get really upset with it but you know you've got to it can be hard mm. but i feel like uh, as an artist it is very important skill mm. to learn not to take it first because exactly. in most cases there are some there are some bad critics i'll, I'll give you that when they just, <laughs> just don't don't like it or uh, point out just a detail that makes no like sense like what why is that going on but I notice it's very good to just, uh, you know, remove yourself from that image and think, okay, why did they point it out? It might not necessarily be exactly what they pointed out, but something to do with it that is wrong. Because if it raises questions, there, there's usually some kind of reason behind it. And if you get mm -hmm. to it, you can make the art even better than it was. Exactly. Like, they're not going to tell, they don't know some of them. You know, some people that might critique it, they might not know how to fix what you're doing. Um, but they exactly, they can find something that might look a bit off. And like you said, it might not be that thing, but there is def definitely something there that, you know, is missing or um, is a bit, bit off. And it's a hard thing to find. I mean, um, I, I found one recently. I was working on this piece here and... Um, is actually for my Wednesday, uh, Wednesday weekly tips that I do. Um, I found a scaling issue because that's that's a thing that um, I, you know, with such a big project that comes up every now and again when I'm when I'm trying to get the idea out, and then when it's like, oh, you know, one thing this character is actually bigger than that character, so it doesn't make any sense. You know, I start working on it and then I don't notice that scaling issue um, and then I you know I come back and I fix it um, you can just see me fixing it now actually um, just fixing you know the size of my characters and coming back and it's a thing that you know um, you can you with Photoshop you can just you know edit it really simply um, with traditional medium it's kind of something that you have to have right first you know you have to worry about scaling and um you have to worry about so much when you oh, yeah, you know you have to get with you know that's a thing that i feel is the difference as well with traditional and digital is that like with traditional you have to get everything down right you know before you start adding tones and then colors and and things like that um but with digital you can delve into colors and things and then it's like oh you can fix up mistakes and you know which is not a good thing to get into um you want to <laughs> hmm. you gotta say something it's, it, uh, no i just wanted to add that uh it is important even in digital to mm. actually try and uh get everything right from the beginning as much as you can yeah. but obviously it's uh, it's much easier to fix yeah exactly but i mean yeah. it's for me it was a mistake that you know i was i was just focusing on getting the piece out there and created and there was like oh no i didn't see this mistake um you know <laughs> yeah. you know taking that step back and look looking at my piece um was really important because if I kept on working on it, kept on just creating it, and then it was like, hold up, <laughs> you know? I, I finished the piece per se, and it's like, hold up, there's something wrong here. <laughs> you know, it gets yeah. out there and everything, and it's like, oh, no, you know? But it, with traditional, it's a bit harder to be like, oh, put it all out there, and it's like, hold up, this is wrong. Um, you can't really tweak it that much, but with digital, you can be like, oh, okay well you can change it so much um which is really cool um but yeah it's just you know you've got to think about those things and i do it all the time um 
and you know we can't remember everything and anything you know um mm-hmm. but it's just yeah don't forget the basics you know scaling is kind of a basic you know um something that's closer to you should be bigger something that's further away is smaller um and also characters as well that's another thing you know you want your characters to be um a relative size to each other you know you don't want a hedgehog to be as big as a um a cat because that you know unless you know unless in well, this unless it's a conscious choice mm, exactly unless it's a um you know a interesting take or a style or something you're going for um that may work but for me i I just don't like a hedgehog to be you know i he's for me this character's um this little guy that's afraid of this scary big cat you know so he's he's got to be um relatively a little bit smaller than the cat um yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, um, do you have a? I oh, say, what are you saying? Um, yeah, I just wanted to that add on the uh, scaling thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that it's it's an interesting uh, thing to keep in mind mm. when drawing any kind of uh, creatures or characters that are supposed to be very small or very big is not to forget uh, to create the environment around them mm. in in a, a manner where the, where it supports that uh, the character is either tiny or mm. definitely yeah you know they um it's a thing that i started out was like more towards just drawing the character and then the background was just like a filler kind of a thing um you know, but that's what I was focused on. Uh, but now that you know, I've I've done so much. Um, I I play around with the background now. You know, there's I. It, it's a part of the actual illustration. You know, to tell the story. Um, what kind of environment the characters are getting into? Um, you know, really tells who that character is. You know. Yeah, it's bit for me. Um, yeah, so I, I talk a bit about schedules and stuff um, on this channel. You know, I feel it's important to have a, a good schedule um, to get things done. You know, you've got to got to work away at things. Um, for me, I have a nine to five, so you know, I've got to um, make a schedule around that, and then I also have um, my little family as well. So, you know, I've got to uh, build a schedule around that. Um, which, you know, that means um, that I have to wake up early to get stuff done. And I also have to, um, a little bit later at night, stay up a little bit. It depends, like, um, you know, by the end of the week I get a bit tired. Last night I was just, like, crashing at, like, 8.30. I was like, nah, I'm going to be <laughs> Um so you gotta keep a schedule but you also have to look after your health um that's a very important thing as well um not everyone can stay up to two o'clock painting and then still go to work and um come home and do it again you know uh, i i definitely you know i i still get th- at least three hours of painting in a day um and on the weekend i get a bit more and it was quite interesting for this piece because I I came to um, actually producing the the video for this and I I noticed that I have actually recorded six hours of me painting just this part of it. I'm like, oh my gosh, really? Six hours of just you know this? That's that's actually kind of more than usual. Usually it's like. Um, up to three hours at max for each part of a piece you know so it's about nine hours for the whole piece <laughs> but this one was a bit longer so like, oh my gosh i've actually worked more than um most which is interesting you know and i i didn't have 
more time than you know, it didn't have more time than other pieces. So it's like, oh, I've actually put more effort and more time in, um, which is cool to see, you know. But that mean processing of the video took a bit longer as well. It took about an hour, maybe a bit longer to um, actually get the piece, <laughs> the video out there, you know. Um, so that, that was annoying because, you know, I had to stay up to like 11 to wait for the video to process. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that's why I was tired and I was like, I accepted that, you know, at least I get this video out there and done and everything sorted. Um, you know, I can just continue painting uh, later on, which I'll probably be doing the next page tonight. I'll be starting the next page. Um, yeah, what? Yeah, time management can be uh, difficult. Hmm. Yeah, it is. It's it's always a challenging battle. It, um, I mean, for some people, it's less challenging because you know they've got not much on, um, or you know they might not have bills to pay. They might just be living with their parents, or um, you know they they don't have so many priorities and things. Um, so it's less challenging, um, but yeah. I think it's important to, uh, even when uh, there's not much time available uh, to spend, let's say, on drawing, it still comes down to consistency and mm. uh, time, uh, like spending that time wisely. Mm. Uh, sometimes it's uh, easy to uh, kind of get lost in something and then it's like, <laughs> I, I've, I've had these moments of where I spent like two hours on drawing something, but I didn't get anything done. Mm. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> so mm. it's like, uh, I just have to find a way to find the inspiration, uh, find the references, um, spend, spend time studying. And then when you kind of go back, then it goes so much faster and easier than just like just sitting down and just drawing with nothing. Hmm. Definitely, it's um. You got to schedule everything. <laughs> you know, you need time away from illustration, and you need, you know, different stuff. Um, other than just sitting down and be like, I'm gonna draw, and you try drawing for two hours, and you know, you end up doing nothing. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. What's your schedule like? Um, it varies, mm. uh, but uh, generally regarding art, I try to do at least um, at least five hours of just pure work. That's like no coffee breaks, no no checking uh, Twitter or whatever. Just like five hours of just work. Mm. And uh, usually, like especially if it's creative, uh, if it's designing, less than uh, more than illustrating. It's yeah. I feel expended after, mm. but uh, generally I just like uh, spread those five hours all across the day. I don't. Uh, I don't really work as in from that hour to that hour. It does not work for me. I usually, um, yeah, just uh, kind of sit down in between and then I calculate my time because in the end I just want to have spent a certain amount of time. On, mm. uh, on the drawing. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Um, you know, I feel like I can be the same. You know, it's I I, I say that I'm gonna work from you know from ten to twelve painting, um, but you know sometimes it gets midway or half an hour in, and it's like, well, I need to do something else now. Or, yeah, I need or to you get like interrupted and mm. have to do something else, like <laughs> chores or whatever else. So. At that time, I just stop the timer, do whatever mm. I need to do, mm. then come back, start the timer again, and continue working. And after after I actually started writing down wh how much I work, mm. I realized that at first that oh damn, I'm, I'm actually not spending a lot of time. I really need to like uh, do more work, even though it feels like sometimes it feels like drawing for 20 minutes, and you think like oh yeah, that's definitely been like an hour or something, when it really wasn't. So yeah, I found it. Uh, I found this method to be very like increase increased my productivity by quite a bit. Awesome! This sounds like a great idea. I've d I've done something similar to that where 
you know, for our um, big project at course, we had to kind of time ourselves and things. Um, you know, how many hours we were spending on it and everything like that, you know, we had to really, we had to really make a big schedule and keep to that schedule and um, kind of time ourselves to how many hours we were doing each week and things like that. And um, also, I was also teaching as well, I was doing um, student teaching, uh, we had I had to clock down how many hours I was actually teaching her um, so that I'd get paid for those hours or whatever. Um, but you know, it all is cool to do that kind of thing. Which is, yeah, really can show you that you're actually working this many hours. You know, you could, you can, you can like work from nine to, nine to like four, but in the end you're probably going to be doing things like you might have to go do dishes for some reason or you might um, stop to make some lunch and have lunch and it's like in the end it's like you know you only do three hours in your day which yeah, you know cuts off. Mm, but, but by looking at you know recording how much time you actually do you know you can work at, work at it and really be like oh well I, I really need to actually try and do you know for you it's your five hours um you know really you have to actually five hours actually doing things and you know the rest of your time dealing with all that other stuff like find, finding clients and all that um other stuff in between yeah um do you look for like clients in things often or um, I'm looking for uh, for a job in a game studio mm. uh, but I feel like um, in my uh, I'm, I'm trying to improve my quality and uh, come up with better designs and uh, yeah all, all of that stuff uh, but I am sitting in my uh, uh, portfolio and uh, CV when I see that there's an opening for something that is uh, that fits uh, what I do, uh, but uh, generally, when it's uh, I don't really look for work if it's private uh, clients. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing um, commissions for a very long time now, mm -hmm. so it's like it's it's not difficult. Whenever I say that it's open, there's enough people who are interested, so I don't really <laughs> have to look for like small commission work. But uh, for for like a larger job, I'm still working on it. Uh, hopefully, I'll uh, manage to get something eventually. Awesome. I mean, that's that's pretty cool that you've got you know people coming in and being like, oh, I want a commission, um, without you having to put much effort into it. You know, um, that that's really cool. It just takes uh, takes time to mm. uh, kind of establish yourself as a mm. person who who's available for commissions. So, like, as long as you don't really stop doing that for a very long time and uh, people are happy with your quality and prices, then it, yeah, it kind of, the wheel keeps, keep. So you cut out there for a second. Oh, uh, I'm not sure what part cut out. Oh, I'm not sure either. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, um, it's, you just get to spend more time if you're, you know. Um, not having to worry about getting clients all the time. Well, yes and no, uh, <laughs> because uh, my goal is still to get into entertainment. Hmm. Um, and I, I really do want to work with games. And that is the kind of job that does not come back and like just randomly <laughs> to me, unless I make like a bigger name or my work really speaks for itself. So, yeah, just have to keep on working, keep on... Awesome. Yeah, so, and keep on working. I mean, for me, I'd like, I don't think I could really take on commissions. <laughs> just because, um, at the moment, with my situation, I'm kind of working on this YouTube thing. Um, these, this book as well, um, getting this book together, kind of personal project. And for me, you know, doing these personal projects is really important. Um, so, you know, if I if I took on commissions, it would take away time from this, and I don't really want to take away time for this because 
at the moment that's all I've got time for is my kind of personal projects um, mm. and you know for me that's n not exactly a bad thing I mean you know getting money versus um, me actually working on my skills and stuff um, you know for me it's me improving and working on my skills and getting better um, working on this to eventually it will go into probably my portfolio or um, just out there you know I want to get this book published eventually um, so yeah it just adds to to my work um, mm. well it's a uh as long as you have a set goal in mind and uh, keep going that direction, I feel like it's it's the right way to approach it. Uh, at the beginning, especially, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I just started illustrating uh, because, well, it was fun. I didn't like. I didn't really uh, think that I would ever start moving towards concept art. But then I was in a kind of situation where I. Uh, ended up on a like a small indie project and it was just so much fun mm. I was just, <laughs> I decided at that point yeah this is this is what I want to do and uh, yeah since then just try to uh, shift even commission work where I could try and do like let's say I uh, draw someone's character and then try to get as much freedom uh, with it as possible while still keeping to the specs given by the client mm. and uh, yeah, it's it's become like just a very fun challenge because uh, yeah, I get to do uh, work for them, but at the same time I'm finding ways of how to make something interesting or look for new new inspirations and uh, themes and yeah, all that stuff. Awesome. What what inspirations do you have? Um, uh, by inspirations I mean mostly like I actually go on Pinterest. And then I just start looking through uh, different period clothing or different mm. kind of just landscape with photos with different moods because that can really change the feel of the image as well. And uh, yeah, it's just like looking for all kinds of crazy stuff in there. There's lots of crazy stuff. I love it. Mm. And uh, uh, like modern fashion also, some bizarre clothing, but then you kind of analyze it and uh, it's like, oh, that's a very interesting fabric or a very interesting shape. And then try to uh, mix those several things that from different uh, imagery that I found into one. And like, it's, it's really awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Pinterest is a great place to find things you know you find something um, and then you know Pinterest finds things that are similar to what you just found um, and you pinned and it just you know keeps finding things that are similar you know it's a its own search engine um, I think that was the most complicated part I found with Pinterest hmm. like when I created the account and I started like uh, uh, pinning what I liked and then it just started showing me the same stuff. I don't want any more of the mm. same stuff. <laughs> so I had to deliberately look for keywords mm. to uh, get like completely different uh, uh, outlooks and imagery because I want uh, like at this point, Pinterest actually gives me like a whole bunch of very varied stuff. Mm. So I love it because now it's actually uh, offering me things I haven't seen before, but I like. So it's like, oh, you're doing this work for me. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, that's great. It's great to see um, other different stuff, you know, without having to openly search for it, you know. Um, with, you know, you're not exactly what you're looking for kind of a thing, you know. You can't be to Google, oh, I want to find something strange, you know, and it finds you something really odd that you weren't expecting. Um, yeah, like Google Google Images does not do this. Mm. Like it, it just it just gives either boring stuff or too much of the same or mm. just not what I'm looking for. But uh, yeah, on Pinterest it's it's been like a treasure trove. <laughs> I only found it like uh, relatively recently, like a, a year ago. I only started using it. Uh, previously, I was just kind of stubborn over it. Like yeah, I don't want to make an account. I'm not gonna. <laughs> But yeah, eventually got to it, and it's it's great. Awesome, well, that's cool. I mean, I I use Pinterest. I made um, some boards there when I was doing design. You know, um, 
I would, you know, for my projects, I'd make boards for them, and I'd just kind of um, use them to inspire me, and I'd pick a couple to talk about and stuff like that. Because we had to, we had to quite, we had to delve deep into them, you know, we had to look at these, you know, if we were doing a poster design, we had to look at some posters that were already out there on the same kind of topic as us, and then kind of, you know, criticise them and sh tell people what was going good with them, what was going bad, and then use that to develop our posters kind of a thing. And it's the same for other projects we had to do. Um, I did it with my character designs. It's really great to do it that way. Um, yeah. Awesome. So yeah, that's been me and Anjavere, if I got it right this time. <laughs> Close. Uh, you can check your work out there again. Um, link in description as always. Um, yeah, it's been awesome chatting with you. Yeah, same here. Awesome. Um, yeah, anything you'd like to say? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's all good. Yeah, she has a, you have awesome work there. A lot of um, character design based stuff and yeah, do you prefer characters? Uh, yeah, uh, before I was kind of a little bit all over the place. I never really touched too much on landscapes. Uh, but then, yeah, eventually just decided that I need to focus on one thing to get really good because if I spread myself too much it's just like it's it's difficult to become a generalist it's uh, mm. like I'll get to it after <laughs> I master uh, characters <laughs> then yeah. I can move on to it. exactly you know you gotta um, for me I've got to work at one thing at a time you know um, you know getting good at characters now I'm good at characters I'm working on backgrounds as well while I'm doing the characters so you know, I, I get to one thing at a time um, and work on those skills as I go. I mean, I'm not going to be good at everything. You know, my there's always strong points um, that I'm always working on. You know, I'm always working on character and creatures and things like that because that's what I love to do. I love creating characters and creatures. Um, so that's what what my what I'm more focused on rather than backgrounds. Um, but yeah, I've got to do backgrounds as well, um, in order to tell my character's story. Yeah, so, thank you everyone for joining me today, uh, hopefully you did enjoy this. Uh, please do, you know, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, uh, leave a comment, I, I really enjoy you guys leaving comments, it's awesome. We'll see you in the next stream, goodbye.